Attending a HBCU, historically black college and or university, compared to attending a PWI, predominantly white institution, can offer students different experiences. There are many contrasts between the two. For example, their social communities, atmosphere, as well as resources. They both focus on diversity and inclusion. They have a commitment to giving educational opportunities to all students, but there are differences between these two types of institutions. This panel discussion explores the history, curriculum, environment, advantages, as well as disadvantages of each type. HBCU grads and PWI grads actually have similar employment rates. Recent research shows that HBCU alumni have an 83% employment rate with PWI graduates at 85%. Controlling for family socioeconomic status, gender, and academic achievement, both have high chance of securing a job. The benefits and drawbacks of attending a PWI and attending a predominantly white institution has its perks. The exposure to diversity, the academic and research opportunities, and the bigger social circles are great, but there are drawbacks too. Feeling isolated or experiencing racism and microaggressions can be a bummer. Benefits of attending an HBCU includes a sense of community, smaller classes, and faculty that prioritizes Black student success. Plus, HBCUs offer a culturally rich experience that can be great for getting involved in social and political movements. But there are drawbacks too. You may have limited exposure to diverse perspectives and it can be hard to form networks outside the Black community. Also, HBCUs may not have the same resources as PWIs, which can affect career preparedness after graduation. In conclusion, there are many differences between the two that can impact your college experience. Ultimately, the choice between a PWI and an HBCU will depend on your individual preferences and goals. After listening to this very informative panel discussion, you will be able to make an informed decision about which type of institution is right for you and your future aspirations. This panel discussion will definitely help you understand the differences between PWIs and HBCUs. Finish the last day of Black History Month off by joining PWI graduates Dr. Marshall, Jade Brown, Latasha Jordan, and Sheikha Drayton, along with HBCU graduates Meridia Washington, Candace Tart, and Dominique Jordan for a very illuminating discussion on the differences and similarities between HBCUs and PWIs on this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on your YouTube page as well as our Facebook page. Greetings SJD family and friends. Good morning and thank you Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jay Brown. I am the athletic director and head girls basketball coach at Booger T. Washington High School, right here in Pensacola, Florida. Last but certainly not least, you know your girl, JB, is a proud member of SJD. Before we begin worship this morning, I just wanna take a few seconds and I want you to listen to me. I don't need you to hear me. I want you to listen to me because it's too often that we know that we sometimes think about we have to do things. It's not about that. We're gonna change our mindset today because we complain sometimes and we say things such as, I have to go to church. I have to attend Bible study. I have to pay my tithes. I have to remain faithful in God. No, 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 Paul, one second. 
It's not about what you have to do. It's what you get to do, ladies and gentlemen. We get to go to church and worship God. We get to honor God by paying our tithes. We get to grow with God by attending Bible study. We get to do things because God is blessing us in so many ways. So on this Sunday morning, I want you to change your mindset. I want you to change your focus. And don't think about what you have to do. I want you to think about what you get to do. Be encouraged and stay blessed. SJD family and friends. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. Our scripture reading will be coming from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. And the King James Version reads as follows Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man seeking goodly pearls, who, when he hath found one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. Let us pray. Lord, thank you again for bringing us together for another Sunday service. Thank you for those that are here in present as well as virtually. Lord, bless the word as it's delivered. Bless the choir as they sing. Have your way in this service. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's clap our hands this morning and give God praise. Oh, come on, let's clap our hands this morning and give God
to be a slave. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. To be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving, Hallelujah. I'll be a living sanctuary, oh Lord, for you. Lord, prepare me Lord, prepare. to be a saint.
highest mountain Looked all around, couldn't find nobody Went down into the deepest valley Looked all around down there Couldn't find nobody I went across the deep blue sea Couldn't find one to come back Grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I climbed upon the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. I went down into the deepest valley. All around down there, couldn't find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to come back. Your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you. I searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I searched high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Mm -hmm. I searched all over, couldn't find nobody. And low, still couldn't find nobody, nobody greater, nobody greater, Jesus, nobody greater than you. Search all over, search all over, couldn't find nobody. Oh, 
couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Searched all over, searched all over, couldn't find nobody. nobody. I looked high and low, I high and low, still couldn't find still nobody. nobody. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, thou who has brought us thus far on the way, thou who has by thy might led us into the light, keep us forever in the path we pray. Good morning, St. John Divine family and friends. Thank you for putting God first and joining us for worship. The announcements are as follows. Immediately following worship this morning, we invite each and every youth to join us in our recreation area for fun, games, breakfast, and Bible study. While the kids are learning and having fun, parents have the opportunity to attend Sunday school and have breakfast as well. Looking forward to everyone hanging out with us for Sunday school immediately following worship this morning. We are a growing church and we give God the glory for the consistent increase in members. We strive to reach out and check on all of our members. However, in order for us to do so, we need updated contact information for each member. If your contact information has changed, or if you haven't heard from our staff in a while, please help us serve you better by contacting the church office and leaving your updated contact information on our voicemail please and thank you. Friendly reminder that your 2023 tax request can be made online. Simply go to our church's website, sjdmbc.org. That's sjdmbc.org. Click on year in tax contributions request at the top of the page and our financial secretary will get your request to you as soon as possible. You can also call the church office at 850-432-0568 and make your request as well. We are pleased to announce that both Lunch with the Lord and Wednesday Night Live will resume this Wednesday. Spiritual food and physical food are served during both opportunities. We are pleased to announce that we now have a recreation area that's available during Wednesday Night Live and Sunday School where the youth can play basketball indoors, play arcade games, PlayStation 5, 4, Nintendo Wii, Xbox, as well as get haircuts and get nails done all in one area. Looking forward to everyone joining us this Wednesday at either 12 p.m. or 7 p.m. Let's be intentional about growing in our walk with God. We are still in need of Sunday school teachers as well as Sunday school assistant teachers. If you are interested in assisting with Sunday school on Sunday mornings, please call the church office and leave your contact information with the secretary. Please and thank you. We are pleased to announce that the Tougaloo College Choir will be worshiping with us on Sunday, March 10th during 8 a.m. worship. 
Tougaloo College is a private, historically black college in the Tougaloo area of Jackson, Mississippi. You definitely don't want to miss this great time in the Lord on March 10th. Asking everyone to please make plans to attend. We pray that you would finish the last Sunday of this month by honoring God in your giving. God has demonstrated his goodness towards each and every one. Let's finish this month off by honoring him in our giving this morning. As always, there are so many exciting events taking place. Our church app is updated on a daily basis. So be sure to check out the news tab and the events tab on our SJD Pensacola app to keep up with all events taking place. Looking forward to seeing everyone this Wednesday at 12 or 7 p.m. as Pastor will be teaching about Blackness in the Bible. Here at SJD, we are a family of believers doing it God's way. Be encouraged. celebrating Black History at WCNC Charlotte. This week, we continue our discussion on education. We've been highlighting historically black colleges and universities. Greek organizations are a big part of the culture at HBCUs. WCNC Charlotte's Aisha Scott has the story from Johnson C. Smith University. The history of black Greek letter organizations like the one I'm a part of, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, dates back to the early 1900s when African-American students were excluded from Greek organizations on predominantly white campuses. Black sororities and fraternity were, were created on the basis of exclusion, right? Um, at some point, um, there were a group of black men who were trying to be part of organization and they needed votes. Um, one white vote meant they couldn't be a part of the organization, so they decided to start their own. Leland Howard is the president of the National Panhellenic Council of Charlotte, an organization that brings all nine black Greek letter organizations together for one common cause. We are able to work together to ensure that there's change in the community. Um, we work together to ensure that um, policies and social policies are being pushed. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated is the first black Greek letter fraternity founded in 1906 at Cornell University. Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated is the first black Greek letter sorority founded on the campus of Howard University in 1908. Also called the Divine Nine, these sororities and fraternities were founded on the principle of service, and it's a value that is still upheld to this day. We're out in the community, we're helping with voter education, we're helping with healthcare education, um, homelessness, you know, we're, we're feeding the homeless, we're out collecting supplies. Over the years, African Americans have joined Black Greek letter organizations for a variety of reasons. I turned to a few of my colleagues to find out their why. My mother and my aunts are all members of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and my uncle is a member of Omega Psi Phi. So growing up, I saw the service. I saw them being dedicated to giving back to their community. My stepdad's a member of Cap Alpha Psi, so that's all I ever knew. That's all he ever told me about. The Sigma was like, they helped me move in. They kind of like sheltered me, they guided me. So it just in my head, I was like, well, if I was to ever, you know, play it, it would be probably that because, I mean, that's what stood out to me the most. They kind of adopted me as a little brother as I came in as a freshman. And I just admired uh, the respect that they, they demanded from the team and the respect that they got on campus. And it was something that I wanted to be a part of. A part of organizations that often felt underestimated. We enjoy being underestimated because when we walk into spaces and, and people have doubted us, we're showing beyond compare that we're ready, um, we're excited, and, and that we, we have been leading for a long time. It's just a matter of other people recognizing how great we are. When that matchless and marvelous name of our Lord and Savior Jesus, who has yet instilled the Christ, believe it or not, this is the day that the Lord has made. And yet and still, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Again, we bless the Lord for each and every one of you. We are grateful for all of uh, the participants in our worship experience. 
up to this point, certainly for our musicians, certainly for our Yaks choir, of course, um, led by Sister Watson, um, our greeters, ushers, media department. For those of you that are watching via Facebook and YouTube, we never want to neglect you. We want to let you know that we are grateful as well for you chiming in by way of your cyber presence. So again, thank God for each and every one of you as well that's watching um, virtually. Um, our ushers, I think I've already made mention of them, official staff, all of the ministers. Again, we thank God for each and every one of you. As you can see, I'm kind of talking fast, only because we have um, several things that we want to do, and uh, we, want, we have a short time to do it. And so I'm gonna just cut to the chase, as you have seen by way of the video presentation, that contrary to popular belief, there are those that think that Greek organizations are demonic and that they are straight from hell. I beg to differ. Um, it is because, amen, you can go ahead and clap right there. Um, it is because I can speak by way of Cap Alpha Psi and as well as having many friends who are members of all of the various fraternities and those who are members of sororities that they all have a biblical base a man that is etched within a man the grain of these organizations and don't hate on what you don't know about um and just because you couldn't get in um you know there's no need of bashing fraternities and sororities maybe you just didn't meet the qualifications and maybe you should just work harder and go to the lord and um go to school and do your thing, and then you can be one as well. Um, I don't know if I should have said that or not, but it's said now, um, and to God be the glory. <laughs> um, hey man, I thought I would just add that. So with that, somebody said, come on back, pastor. <laughs> Um, with that thought in mind, again, um, we are grateful that so many of you have turned out and showed up here at SJD. We want you to know in an hospitable manner that we are grateful for your presence. And so I'm going to ask now that every fraternity that is here, as well as sororities, that you would ready a representative um, here briefly because we wanted to at least um, give you something um, of course, we're getting ready to lift the offering and what have you. Y'all know how we do it in church. We're going to take up some money. Um, but rather than getting from you, we want to give something back to you. And so it is with that thought in mind as well as with that conviction, we have just a little gift um, that we have here for every fraternity and every sorority. And as well, immediately after service, we have a dynamic display that is back in the back as we will be feeding all of you all. Um, and we're not talking about continental breakfast. It won't just be a muffin and a small cup of orange juice, but rather it is an extravagant layout that I'm sure you would agree how scrumptious that it really is and that you will all love it and love to participate in it. So with that thought in mind, I'm serious now. Y'all gotta go back there and I know you wanna do the photos and all of that. So we got this big old thing back in the back, and um, you can take it around that. So we pray to God that immediately after service that you would exit um, to your left and just keep walking. Um, you will run dead smack into it. Amen. But right now, I'm going to ask if, I think I see a few of them, that if there's a representative of Alpha Kappa Alpha, the AKAs, if she would come, amen. Yes, ma'am. On behalf of the members of SJD, we wanted to present this plaque to the AKAs, um, St. John Divine Missionary Baptist Church, Greek in HBCU Sunday, 2024, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority, by culture and by merit. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, man. Thank you. All right. Now, did y'all see how she paused and waited for someone to come get her? 
if there are some young ladies that's watching, whether they are present here in the sanctuary or via YouTube or Facebook, that's how you do a joker. You just stand right there. And if he don't come get you or open your door, you just go back in the house. Because my girls already do that. They do that to me. We'll walk in a restaurant and they'll just stand right there. And just wait for me to open the door for them. So, amen. But that's how you do it. All right. With that thought in mind, I'm looking for a representative that will represent Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Amen. Amen. The Deltas are coming down. All right. I tell you what. We'll, 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 I'll come meet you. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Again, the same reading, St. John Divine Missionary Baptist Church, Greek and HBCU Sunday 2024, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. Intelligence is the torch of wisdom. Did I get that right? You did. Amen. You did. I checked and double checked and checked, checked. Thank you, Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. God bless you as well. Oh, absolutely. She said, is it, uh, you want to do it or you want me yeah, to do it? Mind. You go ahead. Okay. I think you can handle it. Good morning. Good morning. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Amen. It's a blessing to see all of our sisters and brothers from the Divine Nine. And I would like to ask my sorors of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, Pensacola Alumni Chapter, will you please stand? Thank you so much. God bless each of you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Appreciate it. Maybe I'll just stay down here. All right. I'm looking for a representative that will come um, and represent Zeta Phi Beta Sorority. Hello, Miss Mingo. God bless you. Same thing, SJD, Greek, HBCU Sunday, 2024. Um, a community conscious, action oriented organization. Hoorah. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> thank you. You wanted to say something? I would, think, I would like to thank you um, for having us this morning. And on behalf of the ladies of Gamma Tau Zeta Chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, we would like to say thank you. Ladies, could you please stand? Thank you. Amen. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. All right. Sigma Gamma Rho. Anyone here from Sigma Gamma Rho? Come on down, Syria. All right. Well, she is already a member of SJD, but we still thank you for representing your sisters. You got anybody with you? You don't have nobody with you? It's just you? But to God be the glory in the house. Amen. Thank you, Sister Rhea. Appreciate it. All right. I'm looking for some brothers. Um, let's start with Alpha Phi Alpha. Anybody here? Alpha Phi Alpha? Oh, Brother Austin. Thank you. Um, I'm hesitant to read this bottom portion right here. It says, what, you go ahead and say it. It says, first of all, service of all, we shall transcend all. <laughs> oh, six. <laughs> God bless you, Austin. I'm looking for the Brothers Rody of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. This is my childhood friend right here. We played outside. I was just at my grandmother's house yesterday as well. And um, here it is. Friendship is essential to the soul. Amen. You want to say something, Rody? Well, you know, the bros are like a Lamborghini. We don't do commercials. <laughs> <laughs> Did y'all hear that? Look, I'm trying to be pastoral. I really am trying to be pastoral. I got to shake your hand on that one, though, Rody. Amen. He did say, I love you, though, Doc. Amen. All right. All right. 
That, that was good. That was good. All right. All right. Phi Beta Sigma. Phi Beta Sigma. Thank you for it, brother. Amen. <laughs> Let's see if I got this right. Culture for service, service for humanity. Amen. Thank you so much, bro, for coming and sharing with us today. Um, you want to say anything on behalf of your brothers? I just want to say on behalf of the Alpha Alpha Theta Sigma um, chapter here in Pensacola, we appreciate you. God bless you, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, dude. Uh, Iota Phi Theta fraternity. Any representatives for Iotas? Going once, going twice. Amen. Come on down again, Sister Red. <laughs> God bless you, girl. All right. And um, I, I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, I, I'm, Terry, I'm just wondering if by chance there's a representative of, um, I'm going to remain pastoral. I'm going to remain pastoral. No, I'm not. The greatest fraternity this side of heaven. Um, Cap Alpha Psi Fraternity. Is there a representative that will come down? The Noops. <laughs> and I just happen to know um, what they stand for, and that is achievement in every field of human endeavor. One of y'all brothers want to say something on behalf? Oh, say get closer. Okay. Oh. Hey man, want to say anything? All new say yo. yo. And <laughs> we appreciate you, Pastor, and God bless you. Amen. Thank you so much, brothers. Amen. Let's give all of our fraternities and sororities. Uh, I, I know. Okay. I, I knew you were coming back. I knew you were coming back. You know, because when she started, she was trying to be quite formal. But then when all the others spoke and then had they folk to stand up, I said, the AKA is coming back. Here you go. Thank you. Thank you. As a representative of the first uh, black Greek letter organization, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, uh, founded in 1908 at Howard University and also the first black sorority in Pensacola, Florida, founded almost 78 years ago in November as the First Lady Sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority. <laughs> first, I'll say it one more time. My sorority say, say it one more time. Our First Lady Sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Sorors, would you please rise? This is the Delta Iota Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Thank you. And on behalf of Delta Iota Omega, we would like to present you with just a small token. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Again, let's give all of the fraternities and sororities a big hand clap of praise. And uh, whatever is in here, we will use it wisely. And um, we will make certain that we'll probably put it towards our youth department. Okay. Oh, oh, all right. Y'all just keep coming on down then. Shoot. <laughs> We, we got time for this right here. Come on. Anybody else want to come on? I know I talked over that noise in the beginning, but anybody else want to be a part of fraternity? That's all right. Thank you, Dr. Drew. Appreciate it. And thank you so much, Ms. Mingo. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Now, with that thought in mind, um, let's ready ourselves to give unto the Lord. Um, if you don't mind, let's ready ourselves to give unto the Lord. We recognize that giving is a part of worship. And let's take our time now to do that. Many of the fraternities and sororities, they've already done so. But we're going to now read ourselves congregationally that we can participate as well. Shall we bow our heads for a moment of prayer? Lord God, we are extremely grateful for the privilege and opportunity to give. We recognize that giving is a part of worship. And we've come now humbly to do it with a merry and grateful heart. We ask now in advance, God, that you would bless our efforts. 
We pray as well that you would bless these fraternities and sororities that for whatever reason, by the convictions of their hearts, they have paused to plant in this church of which we will direct to our youth department and we thank them for doing so. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm gonna ask now if all of the outer owls, all of the outer owls, if you would stand, they're gonna come around and they're gonna present their gifts. For those of you that are watching online, we're asking that you would take advantage of the giving um, means and opportunities, whether it be by way of Cash App, Givelify, um, or just sending it in or what have you. We're grateful to the Lord for you as well. The choir, that's gonna, they're going to give us some kind of giving music, and we're going to do it cheerfully. Amen. God bless you. for your financial contributions and pray the Lord's richest blessings will be yours in the days to come. Look, we know that we might be spending a lot of time right here, but it is Black History Month and we're not ashamed of the gospel. But we're also not ashamed of being black and um, we don't mind pausing to do these such things. Um, of course, this is not only Greek Sunday, but also HBCU Sunday. Amen. And Please don't throw any stones, but we're getting ready to play a video right quick. And um, all of my degrees came from PWIs. And uh, there was a time that, again, please don't throw any stones. But I even thought that HBCUs were obsolete. And it was only because I did not attend one. And um, now that our daughter is going to an HBCU. 
I want to, if you will, um, redact my statement and say that HBCUs are very much needed. And just in our daughter's first two semesters, I can say distinctly how valuable um, HBCUs are. And so there's a panel discussion that we're going to be airing on tomorrow evening. Um, and it will be airing at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. And we want each and every one of you to tune in on social media because the panel discussion that was conducted, I had PWIs on one side and I had HBCU representatives on the other side. And there was a comparison and contrast of the experiences of both institutions. And so with that being said, please tune in on tomorrow night on our Facebook page, on whether it be on YouTube or what have you, because I believe that um, there would be a lot of debunking of some of the myths that some, like myself, had before being indoctrinated with the valueness of HBCU. So with that being said, you can go ahead and play the video now, media department. Attending a HBCU, historically black college and or university, compared to attending a PWI, predominantly white institution, can offer students different experiences. There are many contrasts between the two. For example, their social communities, atmosphere, as well as resources. They both focus on diversity and inclusion. They have a commitment to giving educational opportunities to all students, but there are differences between these two types of institutions. This panel discussion explores the history, curriculum, environment, and advantages, as well as disadvantages of each type. HBCU grads and PWI grads actually have similar employment rates. Recent research shows that HBCU alumni have an 83% employment rate with PWI graduates at 85%. Controlling for family socioeconomic status, gender, and academic achievement, both have high chance of securing a job. The benefits and drawbacks of attending a PWI and attending a predominantly white institution has its perks. The exposure to diversity, the academic and research opportunities, and the bigger social circles are great, but there are drawbacks too. Feeling isolated or experiencing racism and microaggressions can be a bummer. Benefits of attending an HBCU includes a sense of community, smaller classes, and faculty that prioritizes Black student success. Plus, HBCUs offer a culturally rich experience that can be great for getting involved in social and political movements. But there are drawbacks too. You may have limited exposure to diverse perspectives and it can be hard to form networks outside the Black community. Also, HBCUs may not have the same resources as PWIs, which can affect career preparedness after graduation. In conclusion, there are many differences between the two that can impact your college experience. Ultimately, the choice between a PWI and an HBCU will depend on your individual preferences and goals. After listening to this very informative panel discussion, you will be able to make an informed decision about which type of institution is right for you and your future aspirations. This panel discussion will definitely help you understand the differences between PWIs and HBCUs. Finish the last day of Black History Month off by joining PWI graduates, Dr. Marshall, Jade Brown, Latasha Jordan, and Sheikha Drayton, along with HBCU graduates, Meridia Washington, Candace Tart, and Dominique Jordan for a very illuminating discussion on the differences 
and similarities between HBCUs and PWIs on this Thursday evening at 7 p.m. on your YouTube page as well as our Facebook page. It won't be Thursday. It'll be tomorrow. Um, just so y'all know that. And when you watch it tomorrow, I don't need anyone to rag me about my socks that I'm sure y'all saw. If you didn't see it, act like you didn't hear anything I just said. Um, but I would be remiss of myself if I did not take the opportunity to acknowledge Coach Jade Brown. <laughs> Coach, will you stand if you don't mind? Amen. Is Dominique Jordan, Coach Jordan, you're here? He's not, okay. We want to say, not only as your church family, doggone it, at SJD, but we also want to say as those of us from Pecola, amen, the city of Pensacola, yes, that we are grateful yes, to the Lord for you representing our city in such a stellar fashion in taking those girls to the regional finals. And we know that the best is yet to come. Amen. Let's give Coach Jade a big hand clap of praise. Let's give the city of Pensacola. Amen. You got to be from Pecola to know what's up. If you're glad to be from Pecola, just say, I'm glad to be from Pecola. Amen. Pensacola. Amen. God bless you all. All right.
say joy in sorrow. Yes, you're everything to me. Your hope for tomorrow. Yes, you're everything to me. Your hope for tomorrow. Help me go down the list and let you know that you're everything. Let me hear you say, Master. Master. Yes, you're my Savior. Savior. Whoa, you're my ruler. Ruler. Not only that, you're my redeemer. Redeemer. The love I love you say his name, Jesus. Jesus. It's the sweetest name. Say Jesus, Jesus. He's the will in the middle of the will. Say Jesus, Jesus. He's the lily of the valley. Say Jesus, Jesus. With the bright in the night, he's the bright in the morning star. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Say Jesus. Thank you for this preaching opportunity. We ask now that you would take me out of self, that the preacher may come in. I pray that I would decrease, that you may increase, that nothing that I shall, that I shall say or do be done for my glory, but everything for the glory and edification of the kingdom of God. Rid us of any and all distractions so that we will leave here better than we were before we came. In Jesus' name, amen. The Gospel according to Matthew. Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. Pretty much a familiar passage of scripture, the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. I want to extract from this biblical text, verses 45 and 46. Again, the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 13. I want to extract from this biblical text, verses if you will, 45 and 46. As we continue to preach and teach concerning the subject matter, if you will, of blackness in the Bible, um, dispelling some myths and exposing some truths. If you've located the Gospel of Matthew chapter 13 and verses 45 and 46, will you please say, I'm there. If you're not there, say, I'm in route. All right, assuming based on the silent response that everyone has had ample opportunity 
to locate the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 45 and 46. It reads as follows. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a merchant man. He was seeking goodly pearls, who when he had found one pearl of great price, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. That's it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Um, for about, if you will, 20 minutes, I want to speak from the subject matter. You are worth it, and so is he. You are worth it, and so is he. Amen. Just tell yourself, I'm worth it, but so is he. Amen. Blessings to each and every one of you. When we consider this passage of scripture that is before us, we cannot actually start here at verse 45, because when we look at this pericope, you would discover by way of backing up that Jesus is actively involved in a discourse with people who have gathered around him, and there are so many of them that Jesus himself, he has to retreat into a boat. And while on a boat, he's teaching to the people who are still remaining on the shore. But after he's teaching the people, the Bible calls them the multitude on the shores, he's finished with them. But now that he's finished with them, he now takes his, what Jesus calls his disciples. And he continues a discourse, but it is more intimate and it is more personable. Because again, when he first started talking, he was speaking to the multitudes. But now, in order to get more intimate and personable, he now gathers his disciples. I need to pause and insert this parenthetically, because without insulting anybody's intelligence, you do know there's a difference between the multitude and the disciples because when you consider the historical backdrop concerning the Bible as a whole that Jesus often he had the multitude that would gather around him but as often stated like this and that is is that in life the quicker or the sooner or as you start to approach the cross in which Jesus had done watch this the multitude started to drop off not only did the multitude start to drop off, but also even some of the disciples. Because when you read the Bible as Jesus hung suspended in midair, there was only one disciple that actually ended up at the foot of the cross. And so that right there is a biblical lesson for all of us to apply. And that is, is that whether you know it or not, all of us have to carry a cross. And when you start to carry your cross, don't be surprised when the multitude start to fall off. Okay, maybe y'all didn't catch that. Don't be surprised when your Facebook friends start to fall off. Y'all got that, didn't you? Um, don't be surprised when your texts start to cease. Don't be surprised when the messages start to cease. Because the closer you get to the cross the multitude, they start to fall off. I don't want to be just a part of the multitude that follows Jesus, but rather I at least want to be placed in the category of being a disciple. Because, again, without insulting anybody's intelligence, SJD, you've heard me state this before, and that is, is that for many of us, when we say disciple, uh, we think that that is just merely a follower of Christ. However, when we look at that word more intimately and more intensely, you can see it by way of the derivative of the word itself. Because if you look at the spelling of disciple, uh, you detect the word discipline. In other words, you can't follow Jesus and not be disciplined. Because in life, I don't need a bunch of followers, but I need some disciplined friends. I don't need just a whole bunch of bandwagon jumpers, but I need some dedicated, some loyal folk. Are y'all with me today? And that's of whom Jesus is looking for. He ain't looking to get more Facebook friends, but he's looking for some disciplined folk. 
Are y'all with me today? And so it is with this thought in mind that as Jesus starts to speak to his disciplined ones, somebody say discipline. He's speaking to his disciplined ones, not the multitude, but now from starting at verse 36, he's speaking primarily to his disciples. And what the disciples want to know about, they ask and they ask the question of Jesus about the kingdom of heaven. That's what they want to know about, the kingdom of heaven. Well, when Jesus starts to speak concerning the kingdom of heaven, um, Jesus starts to speak concerning that subject matter in verses 36 through 43. Y'all still got your Bibles open, don't you? But then when he gets to verse 44, verses 44 all the way, if you will, to verse, if you will, 58, Jesus starts to talk about the kingdom of heaven more intensely. Because in the first parable that Jesus is speaking of in verse 44, he's talking about a treasure, don't miss this, that was accidentally found. One more time, he's speaking concerning a treasure that is accidentally found. But now in verses 45 and 46, he's speaking parabolically concerning, if you will, a pearl that was not an accident, but a pearl that was intentional. In other words, Jesus is trying to tell us that, yeah, in the first, or rather in the prior parable, I was speaking concerning a treasure that I accidentally walked up on. But concerning this pearl, this is not an accident. This is not a coincidence. But rather, don't miss this, it is by divine providence that there are no accidents when it comes to God. There is no coincidences when it comes to God. That God meant for you to be here. That it ain't an accident that you're the color skin that you are. It's not an accident that you are as tall or as short as you are. It's not an accident, but I am God's purpose and plan. Amen. And it is with that thought in mind that guess what? He wants us to know parabolically that guess what? This pearl is of great value. And this pearl, if you will, is so valuable that don't miss this, that one pearl in the Bible days was the equivalency contemporarily of $10 million. That one pearl was worth, don't miss this, how much? $10 million. Oh, you can see why that Jesus utilizes this example in order to speak concerning the kingdom of God. What he's saying is that, parabolically, you know that a parable is nothing but something that Jesus utilizes uh, in earthly example in order to give us some heavenly commentary of its significance. So all Jesus is saying is that if the parable is that the pearl is worth $10 million, what Jesus is telling us is that, watch this, the people that I'm pursuing, uh, that they are more valuable uh, than a pearl. Oh, y'all missed your shout right there. Jesus is trying to tell us that regardless of the devaluing uh, that the world can do to us, that don't listen to them, but listen to me. Because what I'm trying to tell you is that, watch this, you are so valuable that you are worth over $10 million. Somebody say, oh, pastor, I don't believe that. That's the problem right there. That's the bamboozlement of this dude by the name of Willie Lynch. Willie Lynch, if you remember, there was a letter that he sent from the West Indies uh, when here in the Americas by way of the initial 13 colonies, uh, when he had problems pulling black folk under his control, uh, and he wrote a letter talking about, amen, the making of a slave, uh, that one of the main things you had to do was devalue black people. One of the main things things uh, you had to do was make them think that they were not worth anything uh, but I'm not here to listen to Willie Lynch I'm not here to listen to anybody else because I am who God says I am that's the problem
problem with some of us is that we got too many contemporary Willie Lynches in our lives. Uh, that anytime you mess up, anytime uh, you don't dot an I, anytime uh, you don't cross a T, they always want to act like your life is over. No, that's what happened, but it's not who I am. Y'all still miss your shout right there because y'all do know that all of us will have some trials and the tribulations. That all of us will have some ups and some downs. That all of us will have some sunshine and some rainy days. But that still does not devalue who you are. You are somebody. You are worth it. You are valuable and you are worth pursuing. Matter of fact, this pearl, this pearl is so valuable. Remember I told you how, how much money was it worth? It was worth e the equivalency contemporarily of $10 million. Hence is why in prior chapters, are y'all still with me? That in Matthew chapter 7 in verse 6, here's what the Bible says. It says, don't cast your pearls before swine. Can I translate Joseph Marshall? Don't, amen, waste your time <laughs> sharing your stuff with folk who don't deserve you. Oh, I'm preaching better than y'all saying amen. He, say, he says, he says, he says, don't spend too much time on the phone. He's saying, don't message dialogally, amen, back and forth too long because you are a pearl. Don't cast your pearl before swine because they will eat you up alive. They'll tell you they'll stick with you through the thick and the thin. And as soon as it gets thick, them jokers get thin. You got to know who you are. You got to know who you are. He said, don't cast. Don't cast your pearls before swine. Then he also said in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 9, he, it talks about how that pearls, Lord have mercy. I know what I'm getting ready to say, so I'm ready to shout. Um, that pearls were utilized uh, to accentuate females uh, when they would get dressed up. Don't miss this, you all. He says, he says, 1 Timothy 2 and 9, he says, he says, there's an situation of pearls as far as the adornment of females. And he says it with that thought in mind that we are God's adornments. That we are who accentuates who God is. Lord have mercy. That, that, that we are, if you will, the accessories of the kingdom of heaven. Lord have mercy. That means that with my ragged and broke down self, with my nasty nature, with my pitiful past, with my horrible history, God said, doggone it, you're still somebody, Joe. He said, guess what? And regardless of what folks say, I use you to accentuate who I am. I, maybe I'm just preaching my own self happy because when I think about that God thinks that much of me, that he wants to utilize me to accentuate who he is, that thing gets me excited because don't nobody know my ragged self like I know my ragged self. And God got the mitigated goal and the audacity to want me Oh, maybe y'all so arrogant and maybe y'all so conceited uh, that you think you deserve uh, to be able to accessorize uh, the kingdom of God. Uh, oh, but when I look over my life uh, and I think about some of the crazy stuff I've done, uh, when I think about some of the crazy places I've been, uh, and God got the audacity to still want me. Lord have mercy. It's 923. Let me cut across the field because here it is. Here it is. He says, he says, here it is. I love this point of emphasis right here. Y'all still got your Bibles open, don't you? I want you to watch the tone of the text and the pace of the passage. Because listen to the tonality of the text. Consider the pace of the passage. Because look, it says again. 
Watch this. It says again. It says again. Three times. Jesus says again, again, and again. Now, if somebody keeps saying something <laughs> again and again and again, if there is repetition, if there is redundancy, if there is this extreme reiteration, it could be that this is an important point that the writer wants us to get. Are y'all with me today? Now, there is something, if I could just use a little bit of my education, there is something called the rule of first mention, and all that means is that you want to trace a word back to the initial time it was ever utilized. And when you trace it back to the first time it was ever utilized, then it's going to remain consistent by way of the forecasting of futuristic passages. And so it is with this thought in mind that it is in Matthew chapter 4, verse 7, don't miss this. Listen to what Jesus said when he first used this word again. He says in Matthew 4 and 7, he says, this is when the devil was trying to tempt him. Y'all remember that good Bible readers? The devil was trying to do what? Tempt him. And Jesus said unto him, referring to the devil, listen to what Jesus said. It is written again. <laughs> Thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Oh, oh, that word tempt by way of the Greek defining of it, it literally means don't try the Lord thy God. <laughs> so, so you know what that means by way of contemporary application? I often tell SJD, you ought to keep one foot in the text, but then another foot in the times. So what that means to me is that, watch this, if Jesus said when the devil was trying to tempt him, and Jesus said, doggone it, don't tempt or slash, don't try me. That means that every time the devil comes in your face, you ought to say, doggone it, don't try me. Okay, some of y'all ain't that bold, uh, but every now and then, uh, you got to be so flat-footed, you got to be so square to shoulders uh, that you need to look the devil in the doggone face uh, and say, don't you try me. Well, what you gonna do if I try you? I may just lift up my hands. If you try me, I just may start praising the Lord. Uh, if you try me, I may start stomping my feet. Uh, and if I can't do nothing, I just may just wave my hand. Uh, because uh, if God be for me, he's more than the world uh, could ever be against me. Uh, tell your neighbor, don't try me. I may just shout on your head, uh, don't try me. Uh, I may just hit you while I'm trying to wave my hand. Uh, don't try me. Uh, and talking about it don't take all that. Uh, if only you knew where the Lord done brought me from. Uh, it takes all of that and a whole lot more. Don't try me. Again. Don't try me Lord it's 927 I cannot believe this I ain't even gotten my first point so if I could just steal from y'all we normally end at 930 ish uh, watch this just give me seven minutes and I promise you I'm going to shut it down alright I cannot believe this I'm in my intro don't try me I'm sorry, y'all. I know you're um, right. I know you're right. So, 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 um, so, what makes you have so much confidence that you can walk around talking about, don't try me? Here's why I don't try me. Because Jesus said again, watch this, the kingdom of heaven. Don't try me because of the kingdom of heaven. Well, what in the world they got to do with the test? Put the picture up on the screen if you don't mind, media department, because here it is. Whether you know it or not, there are three kingdoms. The first kingdom is the kingdom of Satan. The second kingdom is the kingdom of heaven. But then the last kingdom is the kingdom of God. Can you say it with me, class? There's first of all the what? Kingdom of Satan. Secondly, there's what? But then there's the what? Oh, but if you look at the picture very intensely, 
and meticulously. Notice how the kingdom of Satan is that little small dot. I'm about ready to run around the building. But notice how the kingdom of heaven encompasses the kingdom of Satan. And then above that, if that ain't enough, the kingdom of God contains the kingdom of heaven and Lord have mercy. It all contains uh, the kingdom of God. So that means that, watch this, no matter what happens in the kingdom of Satan, the kingdom of heaven will always rule. The kingdom of heaven will always reign. The kingdom of heaven will always be paramount. The kingdom of heaven will always be above and not beneath the kingdom of Satan. So the devil can't do me no harm. Okay. All right, all right. All right, um, so, so, so what Jesus does, what Jesus does, Lord, I told y'all seven minutes. Um, at 9.35, I'm going to be through. I'm going to be through. So, so what he does is that Jesus says, the kingdom of heaven, again, the kingdom of heaven is what? Like what? A merchant man. I'm in the text, y'all. First point of emphasis. May not get to the second point. That's all right. Can you tell it all in one sermon? Um, here it is. You're worth it. Well, pastor, what am I worth? I'm worth the pursuit Somebody say pursuit. Yeah, you're worth it, and so is he. Yeah, you're worth it, but so is Jesus. What is he worth? The pursuit. Lord, have mercy. The what? Pursuit. Because the Bible says parabolically that there is a who? Merchant man. Um, a merchant man, don't miss this, he ain't just a trader, but he's a master trader. And often this merchant man in Bible days, they would go literally seeking valuable treasures. Now, don't miss this because when you really read the historical backdrop concerning the merchant man, watch this. They would go looking for valuables all within the region. However, contrastly, there was some knockoff merchant man. <laughs> Pastor, what you mean, some knockoff merchant man? There were some perpetrators that y'all know how they do. When 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 we went to New York, um, there was this place, and man, you can get Louis Vuitton, you can get Gucci, you can get Fendi, man, you can get what, what um, um, all the name you, you can get them. So I looked at Terry, I said, My God. Man, let's rock up. Let's get some Gucci. Let's get some Louis Vuitton. Terry said, Joseph, you do know that ain't real. I said, but look at it. <laughs> it. It looks real. Jesus Christ. Here it is. Here it is. The Lord recognizes that he knows the difference between fake And real. Here it is. Here it is. I don't want to be a knockoff. I desire. Shoot. Let's just go and get up out of here. I desire that when I worship the Lord. I want my worship to be real. I don't want it to be fake. I don't want it to perpetrate. But I want my worship to be real. And I don't know if I got any witnesses in the house that can say that there are times in each and every one of our lives uh, that you done ran up on some fake pearls. Uh, but the Bible lets us know historically that, don't miss this, that, that in the Bible that, um, yeah, there were pearls. Um, and I've already told you that one pearl um, was worth over $10 million. Uh, but what I didn't tell you is that uh, white pearls, uh, they were, if you will, uh, amen, the, one of the pearls that was worth $10 million. But there were some other pearls, uh, and they were known as black pearls. Uh, that black pearls, uh, they were the rarest of pearls. Uh, and that everybody uh, didn't have a black pearl. Uh, and that means that you may have a white pearl, uh, but I'm looking for some witnesses in the house uh, that don't mind saying I'm a black pearl. Uh, and I am 
am rare. That means you don't see me every day. Uh, and I'm so glad uh, that I am genuine. Uh, I'm a black pearl. Uh, and ain't nothing funny about me. Uh, but when I think of the goodness of Jesus uh, and all that he's done for me uh, with my black pearl self, uh, my soul cried out, uh, hallelujah. I thank God uh, for saving me. Uh, I wonder today, do I have a witness? Uh, do I have some black pearls uh, that can say that the Lord uh, done been good to me? Uh, do I have some black pearls uh, that can say through many dangers, uh, through many snares, uh, I've already come. Uh, oh, but I thank God uh, for every mountain. Uh, I thank God uh, for every valley. Uh, because the merchant man, uh, that whenever he would get a pearl, uh, the way you can tell uh, if it's fake or real uh, was that they would take it on their teeth uh, and they would rub it against their teeth. Uh, and if the pearl was rough, uh, that means it's genuine. Uh, but if the pearl was smooth, uh, that means it was fake. Uh, because the fake pearls, uh, they ain't been through anything. Uh, the fake pearls, uh, they ain't had to go through nothing. Uh, oh, but the black pearls, uh, they done been through uh, the storm and the rain. Uh, the black pearls, uh, they done had the light and the flash. Uh, the black pearls, uh, they done had the thunder and the roar. Uh, but through it all, uh, through it all, uh, they have uh, been able uh, to make it through. I'm through, y'all. It's 9.35. Let's stand. Let's stand. Let's stand. It's, I said 9.35. It's 9.35. You can tell if it's real or if it's fake based upon the texture. Lord have mercy. Authentic genuine bona fide pearls they're rough gritty you know why because they've gone through a process they've been through something smooth pearls they smooth because they ain't been through nothing the question to you today Are you rough or are you smooth? Got a lot of fraternity and sororities here today, but I bet you we got some, some pearls, some black pearls that have been through some stuff. But through it all, Lord have mercy. Guess what? You are worth it. Watch this. And so is he. Amen. Let us bow our heads. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you for speaking to our hearts. And God, we ask now that if there's someone maybe that does not know you as their personal savior, that God, that they would pause, surrender themselves, give their life to you. Secondly, God, if there's someone here today, whether they even be on the balcony, on the floor, YouTube, Facebook, you don't have a church home but you've been convicted and convinced that SJD is a place where you want to be want me to be your pastor I love to be your pastor amen you can make that decision right now then thirdly if you've backslidden gone, gone down the wrong road but want to get back on the right road you can do that today as well in Jesus name amen briefly watch this as the choir is singing if that's you today if that's you today want you to just step out into that aisle. Amen. Make your way to the altar. And we'll receive you into the body of Christ. Then if you don't have a church home, we're not saying that SJD is perfect, but we do serve a perfect God who is perfecting us. So you can come right now. Only going to take about one minute for this. About one minute. About one minute. You already know if you're saved or not. You already know what you want to do. Amen. If you're here today, young man, young woman, Little boy, little girl, won't you come? While the blood is running warm in your veins, will you come? Through it all, yes, Lord. I've learned, I've learned. Will there be one today? Will there be one today? 
Come on, come on, let's say it with conviction. Someone might be trying to make a decision. Come on, let's say it with conviction. Through it all. There you go, right there. Amen. Through it all. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I've learned. I've learned to trust in me. I've learned to trust in God. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, through it all. Through it all. Through it all. Through it all. Yes, Lord. I've learned to Amen. Again, don't forget that we have a full-fledged breakfast in the back for those of you that might want to participate in it. Um, we ask you, we implore you, because of the cooks that have taken the time to cook it, that y'all will go eat it. And then I want to thank God for Sister Shay and her husband because there's a display back in the back as well that would be perfect. It's a Divine Nine display for you to take photos if that is your desire. With that being said, let's bow our heads as we rate ourselves for the benediction. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for all that has been said and done. We ask now, God, that as we leave this place, that we would leave with the sense of renewed value. That God, yes, indeed, we are grateful that you pursued us. And guess what, God, reciprocally, we're going to pursue you because you are worth it. Now may the grace of God, may the sweet communion of your precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with us all henceforth and forevermore. Let every heart say amen. Tell somebody you love them. Amen. Tell somebody you love them. Amen. God bless you. Thank <laughs> you.